Hello, saints and servants of Christ the King. Pastor Sam Williamson here with Psalm 122. It's a short psalm, just nine verses, and I have a few thoughts on it, but let's dive right in here. Psalm 122 is a song of ascents, and this falls into a category of psalms that uh, ranges from Psalm 120 through 134. And all of these psalms were used as uh, God's people would travel from their various locations up to Jerusalem for the feasts that God had commanded them to gather together in Jerusalem. And this in particular is a psalm of David who wrote the psalm. And so let's consider what David has to say to us as we pilgrimage as well. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet have been standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. I've been mentioning quite a bit lately how different verses or portions of Scripture seem to take new meaning on uh, during this time that we have where we're not able to move about as freely as we're used to. And verse 1 in particular is one for me that has been really sticking out. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because this is a psalm of David, David would have been speaking here about the tabernacle. Tabernacle. Because at this point, there was not a permanent house. Instead, it was a tent that God had commanded his people to uh, put together and where he promised that he would meet with them, he would dwell with them, they would make their sacrifices there and uh, pray to the Lord. And we are glad as well when we go to the house of the Lord and as we wait, as we ascend back to God's temple uh, someday, hopefully soon. Lord have mercy, let it be soon. Uh, this is a good psalm for us to be praying. Continuing at verse 3. Jerusalem built as a city that is firmly bound together, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, as was decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. Their thrones for judgment were set, the thrones of the house of David. In the scriptures, whenever you go to Jerusalem, you always go up because Jerusalem was on the top of a mountain. And so whenever you go to God's house, you are ascending. And it's good for us to think that way too. Whenever we gather together at church, we are going up to the house of the Lord. Uh, we are meeting where God has promised to be with us. And so while we have our feet steer, still here on earth, we recognize that we go up whenever we gather together to be in God's presence. One other thing here with verse 5, their thrones for judgment were set. And that might sound a little bit uh, worrisome because we know we're sinners. And yet, as Christians, we know that because the blood of Christ, which was shed for us on the cross, his blood covers us. And so whenever God's judgment comes to us who have faith in Christ, the judgment upon us is always not guilty. You are innocent because Christ has paid the price for your sins. And so we rejoice in that. Finally, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they be secure who love you. Peace be within your walls and security within your towers. For my brothers and companions sake, I will say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your good. There's a little bit of a play on words here. You see in Jerusalem, Jerusalem is the name of the capital city. It's the name where of the town where the tabernacle was eventually built. But in David's day, Jerusalem was also where the tabernacle was uh, permanently stationed. Even though it was a temporary building, in David's day it was put there. Uh, but Jerusalem means teaching of peace. And there's lots of speak here about peace. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Peace be within your walls. Peace be within you. And this is what we pray as well. Uh, we don't currently live in Jerusalem, and yet uh, the place where God has promised to dwell with us as brothers and sisters of Christ the King it is the town of East Grand Forks. And so may we pray for the peace of our town. Uh, may our town be secure. May peace and security be within our walls and towers. And may God protect us. And for my brothers and companions' sake, we pray for this for us. We pray for peace for us and for our families. But we're also praying for peace uh, for those who aren't within our families, who don't dwell in our homes. We want God's peace to be with us as Christians, but also to extend to those uh, who don't know Christ so that in peace we can continue to proclaim God's word to them.
And in the midst of a time where a lot of this seems very foreign and very uh, not, very much not what's going on right now, we also remember that God's peace is not something that we will ever experience here until Christ returns. And so where ultimately do we look for that peace? And when we go to the New Testament, in particular Hebrews 12, 22 through 24, we recognize that the peace that we have is coming still in the future. We have it sometimes now, and yet we look for the peace that will come in eternity. So this, which I just pulled over, is from Hebrews 12, again, starting at verse 22. But you, Christian, you believer in Christ, you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels and festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Again, that peace that we have, even in the midst of judgment, (laughs) is because of the blood of Christ that he shed upon the cross. And because we have that peace, we are in the new heavenly Jerusalem with all the saints, with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven. We have that now. And so may God's peace dwell with you as you recognize the heavenly and eternal peace that Christ has won for you. And may that peace that Jesus gives and that Jesus alone can give, may that peace guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen.